Captain and Pangella too. And our host, Vincent Van Dahl. And he brings it to ya! Creature features! And all creatures! And all creatures! And the creature oh, gonna oh. get you tonight! You better not turn out your bedroom light! You grab your head and give us such a bite! Oh look, they're running a Don Knotts film on Channel 4, The Ghost in Mr. Limpet. I've never seen that one before. Oh indeed yes, Exorcist 2, The Heretic on Channel 11. That one should have won an Academy Award <clears throat> early. Oh. Why hello, you're early tonight. No, you're late, as usual. Don't judge me, you know I have issues with all the bloody clocks in this old house. None of them have proper numbers. Damn Romans. Welcome to Creature Features. I'm your host, Vincent Van Dahl Esquire. The punctual prude looming over my right shoulder is my impeccably dressed minder of the mansion, the quite mannered Mr. Livingston. While the quaint and quiet cherub on this side would be my quintessentially quick-witted and quirky queen of the manor, the highly quotable Miss Tangella. And do we have a most ludicrous show in store for you? movie-wise at least, and I fully intend to explain why in a moment. But at least, however, we do have a lovely and knowledgeable guest, so let's chat about her first, shall we? For joining us tonight will be graveyard docent Shannon Toomey. Shannon conducts tours of local cemeteries and even carries out guard duty on nights like Halloween when troublemakers are known to wreak havoc and bring about damage upon local graveyards. Shannon will share with us how she found herself involved in this cryptic business, tell us about the time she saw a ghost, show us some of her tiny coffin creations, and even chime in about tonight's film, which is The Vampire's Ghost from 1945. Go on. I simply don't want to. You know, I'm not at all fond of this film. It's somewhat rather stupid. As is every other film you present. Finish your introduction, so as we may be done with it. Oh, all right. Starring John Abbott, Peggy Stewart, Grant Withers, and Adele Mara, the story takes place in a small African port where people are dying due to bites to the neck. The local constable suspects these to be the vile acts of voodoo sacrifice, but a couple of know-it-all tourists speculate that there may be a vampire involved. Blah, blah, blah. The movie only took 10 days to film, so one can guess the quality of cinema we'll be foisting upon you tonight. You might want to catch that Don Knotts movie on Channel 4 instead. But if you don't, then don't go away, for it is to be another night of Vampire Graveyard Fright, right here on Creature Features. Ow! My butt! Stay tuned. Creature Features is brought to you by CreatureFeaturesStore.com, the official merchandiser of Creature Feature accessories. Welcome to Creature Features. It's going to be one of those fun nights. You know why? We've got an actual grave digger with us. No, she does not dig graves, but you dig them in the hippie sense of the word, right? Mm -hmm. Like I dig it. 
At dig. She digs graves and I dig graves and Tangela actually literally digs graves. But uh, now you are a docent. Yes. Right? Are you a decent docent? I'm all right. All right, good. So she does tours of uh, the Santa Rosa Cemetery and you've done others though, right? Uh, just at the Santa Rosa Rural Cemetery. Santa Rosa Rural Cemetery. You know, there's lots of earthquake victims there. Yes. Right. You look at the tombstones and they say date of death, 1906, April, whatever. What was it? April, April 5th? April 6th. April 6th. I was close. All right. Shannon Toomey. She's uh, here to tell us about these tours and talk about graves and spooky stuff. You're going to show us a few things you've created. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're going to have lots of fun. We're going to watch this film, The Vampire's Ghost. You know, I've seen this film and I don't like it. I think it's pretty good. I like the scream in the first. The, the screams. Beginning. I think it's a pretty good scream. All right. No, I can, I can appreciate the audio aspects of a film, but the story seems somewhat rather stupid. I mean, oh, we're going to Africa. Oh, no, it's voodoo. Oh, it's a vampire. Who knows? It's somewhat rather silly, don't you think? I think being in a place like Africa where the voodoo like orig originated and right. where it's authentic, I think it brings a whole nother like realness to the story but you would not go to africa to see voodoo you would go to see like tigers and elephants would you not uh, it'd be, uh voodoo would be part of their culture so i would go there to oh, see part of their culture as well right right no i suppose that'd be that'd be a thing as well all right so we're gonna start this film and then uh, you're gonna tell us all about these tours and maybe even a ghost story right maybe all right off we go the vampire's ghost 1945 don't go away even if you hate the movie See ya. land where voodoo drums beat in the night, where the jungles are deep and full of secrets, and the moon that lights them is still a mystic moon. Africa, where men have not forgotten the evil they learned in the dawn of time. I always come back to Africa, but even here there is no rest for me. The path of time is curved upon itself like a circle, without beginning, without end. I must follow it forever. I cannot die. I cannot rest. I cannot rest. I cannot rest. Bless me, Father. Bless you, Mongo. Go on your way and have no fear. Bless us, Father. Bless you, children. Go on your way and have no fear. Bless you, Father. Roy, 
You've been away for ten years. Less than ten weeks. Have I changed? For the better. Only that's not possible. I'm uh, still wearing it. Mm, just wanted to make sure you didn't pick up some more of them while you were in Johannesburg. In a hospital for children. Well, how about the doctor? Sixty, skinny as a rail and bald. Well, looks like you'll be needing a priest. Father Gilchrist. Hello, Father. She's gonna make a lovely bride, Roy. Oh, Blarney. Blarney? Well, I like that. Well, you folks can stay out here if you like, but it's ten degrees cooler inside. And uh, more of these. No, thanks, Tom. But I will take a nice, big, comfortable chair. I just trekked in from Alongo Village, <laughs> and I'm a little bit weary. The best chair in the house, Father. There you are. Two more, Esther. Those drums. They've been going like that for weeks. That's exactly what brought me back, Tom. Once a rumor gets started in the jungle, it spreads like wildfire. If you don't stop it, the natives revert to voodoo magic, witchcraft, superstition. Unless it's stopped, my business will be. All the native workers out at the plantation are either quitting on me or laying down on the job. Another murder out there Saturday. That's three in a month. Four. There was another last night right here in Bakunda, down the street. Oh, really? Well, uh, the three out of the plantation I've seen, each body partly drained of its blood, each with two peculiar wounds at the throat. Here. You know, if we were living a hundred years ago, I'd almost agree with the natives. A vampire. Oh, vampire. A dead man denied heaven because of his crimes, doomed to remain on Earth in hideous semblance of life, sustaining his body on the blood of the living. Oh, medieval Tommy Rod, it's just a legend. Yes, but a universal legend, Julie. Well, now, do you believe in it, Father? No, I don't believe in vampires. But I do believe with the church in the power of evil. Whether we believe it or not, something's going on. It's having a bad effect on my native workers. Same trouble here in town. Any ideas, Roy? Yeah, I thought I'd see Webb Fallon. Webb Fallon? Who's he? Fallon. Fallon. That's from the old Gaelic. It means the stranger. One who walks in the darkness beyond the campfires. And that describes Fallon. Now, he's a newcomer to Bakunda. Runs a dive down near the waterfront. Nobody knows exactly where he came from. And in Africa, you don't ask questions. Well, what can he do? Well, in the short time Fallon's been here, he's come to know more about Bakunda's underworld than most of the natives. If anybody knows what's going on, he does. I'll be back shortly. My goodness, this is just going mad. Who does your hair? I do. Oh my God, that's incredible. Will you do mine as well? Just. That's it, just like this? Yeah, just. If I do this, it'll look like yours? And then you gotta do. Oh, I can't do that. that, I'll break my neck. I'm not as flexible as you. Welcome back to the show. Uh, if you're just joining us, we're with the wonderful Shannon Toomey. And what are you? You're a, you're a cemetery guide person, right? I'm a cemetery lover. A cemetery lover. Well, we're all cemetery lovers, but what makes you different is that you are knowledgeable about cemeteries and you give tours and uh, and we're watching The Vampire's Ghost, but w whatever. You like this film. I, th I think it wasn't too bad. You think it's it was intriguing. Bad? It's intriguing. Yes, it is intriguing. And we're going to see more intriguing stuff, maybe. But uh, so these tours, you do them primarily at the Santa Rosa Rural Cemetery, that's what it's mm -hmm. called, right? Yes. Rural Cemetery. So tell me about this place. I, I've been, and Tangela's dragged me there more than once, but uh, what's the history? How long has it been there? It's been there. Uh, it's on Franklin Avenue. It's been there since 1854. 1854. Originally, it was on Cemetery Lane. There was a Cemetery Lane? Franklin Avenue used to be Cemetery Lane. Oh, my goodness. And then why did they change it? Good question. Who knows? Some, some bloke named Franklin came along and said, I don't know what this called Cemetery Lane anymore. I want it to be named after me. And that's, he probably had the money. Yeah, money, money, money yeah. can get you that money can make you rich. 
Money, sure. money can buy you a huge monument. Right, right. Now, so, all right, 1854, mm -hmm. right? And uh, so this is like during the Civil War they built this. Are there any Civil War people there? There are Civil War veterans of both sides. Wow. Now, uh, who, who famous is there? I know of one. Well, the first person to be buried there was a man named Thomas Thompson Mize. He came over in a covered wagon from the East Coast and made it all the way here to Santa Rosa and then had a little too many spirits and uh, drowned. He drowned? And he was the first burial. It used to be somebody's farm, so hence, like, the rule, the hilly. Oh, my goodness. The I, he made the entire trip, and then, like, two days later, he was dead. About a week or so. He a was really excited. So? Yeah. Well, you know, I've spent some time in San Rosa. He might have killed himself. Yeah. There's you never a know. Lot. It's no. I love San Rosa. I'm joking. Yeah, they take things personal. These San Rosa people. So, all right. So that was the first one. But when I went with Tangella, I saw Mr. Ripley's Ripley's grave. Like Ripley, believe I'm, it or not. Believe it or not, I don't believe you. He's there. You know he's there. He's not in the Santa Rosa Rural Cemetery, All right, though. He's next door. Yeah, in the Odd Fellows. There's like three different cemeteries in this big, beautiful uh, property. Well, that makes sense because he was somewhat rather an odd fellow, was he not? <laughs> yeah. See? <laughs> See? So um, the earthquake, there's lots of uh, earthquake victims. There. Mm -hmm, including uh, Madame Excelsior. Who is um, that? She was with a traveling show um limber and stretchy and beautiful outfits and she performed and she was staying at the western hotel madame excelsior mm -hmm. wow and um during the earthquake she was staying in this beautiful basalt building called the western hotel right. and it she died basalt is like a building structure material it was, it was it was um some rocks that were quarried from the area. Oh, and that all fell because of the earthquake, right? Mm -hmm. So she was squished. Madame Excelsior was squished. That's terrible. But, you know, I want to find a, a photo of this person because I'm picturing in my head what a Madame Excelsior would look like. I, I picture somebody in flowing robes. What do you think? Have you I seen a photo? So. I don't have, I don't think I've seen a photo. Mm -hmm. I like to keep the Excelsior. mystery. Right. Yeah, the mystery. No, mm -hmm. I agree. I, I'm the same way. No, people say, oh, I, I'd like to show you a photograph of my, my children. And I'll say, no, I, I prefer <laughs> the mystery. Please, please. All right, I'm going to signal we got to get back to the film. Uh, when we come back, I want to hear exactly what you do when you're walking around this uh, cemetery. All right? Sounds great. All right, off we go back to the vampire's ghost. Don't go away because uh, there's more fun to come.
not through yet, Fallon. You've got everything but my shirt down there now, but you can't throw naturals forever. Here's my share of the trader boat, Bacunda Queen. Seven. Devil himself couldn't have such luck. Hey, you. <laughs> Hey, everybody! The drinks are on me! Hey! Hey! Come on over here! Hey! That sailor, he'll make trouble. Go on, dance, Lisa. Hello, Fallon. Well, Mr. Kendrick. Pretty rough on the guy, weren't you? Oh, I didn't ask him to play. Well. Boxcars. You didn't come here to shoot craps with me or drink my bad gin. What's on your mind, Mr. Kendrick? Well, a lot of people come to your place, Fallon. All kinds of people. I thought you might know something about these mysterious killings. Yeah, but Kunda seems to have gone back into the old ways, in spite of the Father Gilchrist and all they can do. Well? Nobody could shoot a game like you as a straight dice, Fallon. I want my money back, and my ship, too. Take it easy, fella. I draw the dice myself. They're straight. Stay out of this, Kendrick. I... Get out. All of you. You hurt, Roy? Not bad. Thanks to you. Better come in and wash up. Hey, Barrett. What happened to you? I don't know. It's the first time I ever quit a fight when a guy just looked at me. What happened to your mirror? Did you break it? I removed it. The mirror's as bad as the sun if a strong light hits it. I have to be careful. I've got bad eyes. Africa's a pretty tough place for a man with eye trouble. Oh, I don't go out much in the daytime. When I do, I wear these. Come in. Excuse me, Mr. Fallon. You know the fellow you give your buttered winnings to? The one that was buying drinks for the house? Yes. He just dropped dead out there. Heart attack, I guess. Not a mark on him. I'm sorry. Is there anything else, Jack? Well, no, I guess not. Except, what will I do with this? Give them to somebody else. Yes, sir. Don't touch that! I'm sorry, I was only looking for a cigarette. I didn't mean to speak so sharply. It's only that, well, this box means so much to me. 1588. The year of the Spanish Armada. But that's your name. And the name of my ancestor. Elizabeth Regina. Yes, she gave that box to the Webb Fallon of that day. For services rendered to the Crown. Here, you wanted a cigarette? Well, thanks. That's uh, very interesting. Why don't you come to dinner and tell us about it? I'm staying at Tom Vance's place. I'm sure they'd like to meet you. I wonder. You're a lucky man, Roy. Found for yourself the loveliest girl in all Africa. Or anywhere else. Oh, a slight exaggeration, I might add. Cigar? Ah, well, how can I thank you for a wonderful evening? The most charming people in Bakunda society. It's been a pleasure. Quite different from the life I usually lead. Mr. Fallon, do you mind if I ask you a question? Oh, please do. Just why do you lead this sort of life, a man of your intelligence and culture? Well, fate sometimes leads a man down strange pathways. A man always has a free will. Always. 
Sometimes things drive a man, regardless of his will. Things that may even tear his soul. And there's always the church. Tom, a glass of water. It's all right, please. I'm sorry. I had a touch of malaria once. These attacks are quite frequent. Simon Peter, coffee for Mr. Fallon. Oh, please, just be seated over there. I'll be all right in a moment. <sighs> Let's talk about something else. Yes, boy, I will have some coffee. Those drums again. Malongo Village. Malongo Village? You can read the code. Part reading, part guessing. There's a witchcraft cult in Malongo Village. That's where the trouble usually starts. It is a bad village. Has been for some time. I wonder if that's the place the vampire rumor started. Perhaps we ought to get a few men together and go up there. Might be a good idea. It is a good idea. I'll go there with you if you like, Roy, if you want company. Of course I want company. But are you sure you're well enough? Oh, I'll be all right in the morning. Shall we start at dawn? At dawn. That mirror. Evil, Mr. Roy. Evil. We'll go back to the show. Miss Shannon stepped away to get uh, items. Small things, I think. Small things. No, that's what she makes, is small things. And small things are good. Big things S come in small packages. No, small things come in good packages. I, no, I did not make that up. You're mixing your metaphors. No, I do not mix metaphors. In any case, uh, we're going to do some mail because you send us mail. And if we do not read the mail, then... then it will go unread. I suppose it would. But other bad things will happen as well. Like, she'll, she'll make faces at me like she's not happy. That's one thing. Is that new? And you'll grumble because the mail room will be full again. Indeed. Right. So, how about a piece of mail, Mr. Livingston? From Dayton, Nevada. Dayton, Nevada? Yes. Nevada. Dayton is in Ohio. Well, there's and there's one, one in Nevada, Nevada as well. Carl Chisholm. We heard from Carl before. I know that name. It's a British name. Chisholm. There's right? the Chisholm Trail. Well, what are you talking about a bloody Chisholm Trail? It's, it's, it's Carl Chisholm. He doesn't live on a trail. There's a gift in there. Let's see. Oh, don't break it. It could be glass. My goodness. I don't know how I put up glass. with that one. All right. Here we go. Dear Vincent, Tangella, and Mr. Livingston, thank you for the nice letter and gift. Oh, he's, he's, a, he's a sponsor. You sent him something, love. The arm socks are really cool, and I appreciate the signed picture. Enclosed are a few small gifts for you all. Have an awesome Halloween. We did. It was fun. Did you like Halloween this year? It was rather entertaining. It was. What is this? Oh, these are gifts for us all. Where's and then uh, Carl Chisholm, and he put um, ghostly things on the letter, which you probably can't see, but it's, uh, it's a hand coming out of the ground, a haunted house, and a pumpkin. I like pumpkins. That's for me. Oh, keep it, creep it real. I like this. Let me see. Oh. It's a small sign that says, creep it real, distributed by Inter-American Products. That's wonderful. I shall place this in a place of honor. Button covers with my initial. No. Indeed. You don't even own a pair of these. Look at this. You sure these aren't cufflinks? No, they're button covers. Very nice. All right. Quite you nice. have to wear these all the time now. And socks. Show me. Bless your cotton see. socks. Oh, and they're new. How can you tell? I can tell. So they have octopi and starfish and bubbles. This is wonderful. And what is that for? Andrew, show me. What'd you do with well, that so bloody fool? For she's, she's so unkind to that poor man. Indeed. Uh, we'll, we'll get Andrew his gift in a bit. 
Thank you so much, Carl. And uh, we hope things are going well in Dayton, Nevada. Dayton, Nevada. That's new to me. All right, what's up next, Mr. Livingston? From Great Britain. Great Britain, I know this place. Oh, look, it's even got the queen, bless her soul. Indeed. On the stomp. All right, please do not bend. It looks like they bent it. You know, the postage, postal service here tends to bend things, but I think we survived. All right, so there's a book and a letter from Sarah Davies. Oh, no, that's a British name. Quite. There's ever been a British name. It's Sarah Davies. Let's see. Did you write this book, Sarah? I bet she did. But her name is not on it if she did. Find out if Sarah Davies wrote this book. I bet she did. Maybe she's just sharing it with us. Hi, Vincent Tangella and Mr. Livingston. I'm a massive fan of a place called Berry in South Wales, UK. I watch as many shows live on YouTube, but if I can't due to the time difference and it's in the middle of the night, I always watch later in the day. You know, many of our viewers do do that. It's, you know, it's, it's time shifting, I believe they call it. Interesting. No, and there's that mad scientist viewer of ours who has the time machine, so he can just go back and watch the live one whenever he wants. Oh. I need to get one of those. I, I think it would improve my musical career if I did. I'll see what I can do. All right. Uh, let's see. Uh, where I? The films are great, as I love the classic horror films. My favorite was a bit more up-to-date, 28 Days Later. Uh, it would be a while before we show that one. But when I was a kid, I loved Jaws and would watch it nonstop. Keep making a great show and ask Tangella to leave Andrew alone. It can't be healthy for him, and his medical insurance must be through the roof. Yes, indeed. I've enclosed a book I love reading as it's about what's local to me. Would love a signed autograph if that's at all possible. Thank you, Sarah Davies. Well, we'll take care of that, Sarah. And thank you for the lovely book. Let me see this. About Cardiff, which is haunted. in Wales. It's haunted, Cardiff. In Wales. Oh. Of course, it's in bloody Wales. Where else would it be? No, there's a Cardiff in Australia, I believe. Yes. So, but she's not talking about Australia. Hey, look at all these ghastly places. I, I want to read this book. Make sure she gets a uh, autograph photo, would you? Indeed. All right, last thing. Last thing. Last thing. Package. You did it again. You made it look heavy, and it's not. I think it's just because he's gentle. He's gentle. Oh, my goodness. This one is full of stuff and peanuts. Do you know these are edible? No, they are not. They're edible. They're made out of corn. That doesn't mean they're edible. A little salt, and it would be like popcorn for people who work for UPS. All right, we got a note of, uh, it's, I've never seen this before. It's a dragon skeleton. Hmm. Maybe we'll pop up a big one. Dragon skeleton. And that's this. Creature features. Oh, this is nicely done. Uh, thank you. Have a scream. Sharon, Tracy, and Kathy Emmerich, I'm going to say. Maybe. Let's find out. Emmerich. That's a German name. Emmerich. Emmerich. I-C-H. Emmerich. Em Emmerich. It's not the typical, maybe it's Emrick, I don't know. Emrich, let's find out. Dear Poulter Mansion residents, that would be us. I'm Tracy Emrick, Emrich. I'm just gonna say Tracy Emrick, apologies em. if I'm wrong. I'm Tracy Emrick, all the way from Mino. Rhymes with why not, my not. No, that's a French word, it's M-I-N-O-T, Mino, right? Mino. Mino, but they say it's, it's pronounced my not. All right, let's go with it. My not North Dakota, I, my wife Sharon, and our daughter Catherine absolutely love your show, and we never miss an episode on YouTube. We also wish to thank you for the amazing sign picture, which now hangs prominently on our horror hall. We're hearing from all our uh, sponsors, our mm -hmm. patrons. This is wonderful. We have enclosed some goodies for you all. For the lovely Tangella, we give a lovely octopus with threads that glow in the dark. Oh, look at this. That's incredible, so nice. Mr. Livingston, we lived in Germany for nearly a decade and know what would put a smile on your face. Gummies, Howdy by the bo. way. Howdy bo. By the way, Sharon loves your voice. Thank you. 
Andrew, we have to stop provoking Tangela. It'll be the death of you yet. So to help you out, we are sending a package of bandages. Very nicely done. You know, for those of you, for, for those of you sending bandages for Andrew, you have to send bigger ones. And like ace bandages. Ace bandages. Right, ace bandages and splints. He needs splints and suture. Is That's that what a, he needs is suture, is right? That a window cleaner? Let me let me get to it. Agatha, you get in trouble when you vacuum during the broadcast, so we felt that a nice, quiet floor duster could be useful. Very nice. For Tracy the plumber, we felt a simple tool to help unclog whatever Tangella lodged in a pipe would be helpful. What is this? Snake. Oh, that's incredible. No, I, I, I could have used that in my sink. And last but certainly not least, Vincent as Lord of the Polter Mansion, we felt you needed something that would restore dignity and offer a semblance of old world charm. So included a Scandinavian troll for you to decorate the mansion. Is that an actual, it is. Look, he's got the symbol. I've never seen a Scandinavian troll. Neither I've just seen I. the naked ones with the bottom sticking out. You know what I'm talking about, don't look at me like that. Keep up the incredible work, keep showing those masterpieces, and we shall remain loyal fans forever. By the way, is there any chance of showing Plan 9 from Outer Space again? Also, a rather obscure film, Request 1967, It, starring Roddy McDowell, if not that, the silent classic, De Golem, would be amazing too. Love you all, Tracy, Sharon, and Catherine uh, Emmerich. Um, okay, so uh, Plan 9 from Outer Space. You know, we did run that some time ago, and we tried to run it again, and they told us no. So I think somebody else bought that film, and it's maybe so, it belongs to Amazon now. So you know that. No, Amazon. Amazon's greedy with the films. No, they're terrible. Uh, the second one was It. We will look into that one. It sounds good if it stars Roddy McDowell. And uh, Golem, or De Golem, that's one we could get. It's a silent one we have not run yet. I believe so. Golem. Yeah. It's, we don't know what to do with the silent films because it's it's like yeah, she silent. talks she talks over the silent films all the time. She just you can't hear the silent film because she's yammering on and on, right? Indeed. Indeed. All right. Uh, thank you so much, Tracy, Sharon, and Catherine, and we hope things are wonderful in my not. I think it's me no though. And that's it for letters, right? That's it. That is it for letters. If you'd like to send a letter your, of your own by email, send it to the address you see appearing under my shoe. Or if you'd like to send a wonderful box of goodies like all these people did, send it to the address you see appearing under my knee. We'll be right back soon with Miss Shannon, but first let's get back to The Vampire's Ghost from 1945. I'm going to eat those, you know. Uh, miss me. No, it's just a flesh wound. Simon Peter, better wash it out. The shot came from over there. Gun trap. You set it off yourself when you hacked at this. This is the second time you saved my life, Fallon. How can I say thanks? Oh, don't try. We're getting into bad country. I think we better make camp here for the night, unless you want to run into more of these. Yeah, I guess we'd better. The 
Wanna file him here. IQ now. Me topper here. Bullet come from front over there. Bullet hit top. Same bullet. Why bullet no go through Buana Fala? Taba, the bullet did pass through his body, but there's no mark, no bleeding, nothing. Vampire. Taba, he must be destroyed. Bullet won't destroy him. What will? A spear dipped in molten silver. Drums, they stop. From me, take it away. I can still feel it searing me. There's no blood on it, Roy. Fallon. You know now the drums were telling the truth. Why are you? Look at me. You're seeing a creature that doesn't exist. You're looking at a legend. The natives knew. As soon as they saw the first body, the first victim. They knew what creature it is that must have human blood to live. Stay, Roy. Listen to me. Four hundred years ago, there was a young woman. I caused her death. Since that time, I've been under a curse. The curse of the undead. Young people like you and Julie, I destroy them. I cannot die. I live on and on to destroy peace and happiness. No, Roy. Put down the spear. Put it down. You can't fight me. I have walked the earth for 400 years. I've learned things that no human being can ever know. No man is strong enough to fight me. Kneel. What do you see? Only your eyes. Do you hear me? I hear you. Your mind belongs to me from now until the day you die. You will never speak of this. Never. 
I will never speak. Under my head is the box containing the earth from my grave. The box Queen Elizabeth gave me after the Armada. Carry my body to the mountaintop. Lay my head on the box and leave me where the rising moon will bathe me in her light. Let nothing stop you. This is Livingston, and you're watching Creature Features. Not now. Stay tuned. talk about this what uh, this little thing you got going on oh i had some kool-aid this morning kool-aid yeah oh i was hoping it was blood ah uh, maybe welcome back to the show we are watching the vampire's ghost with shannon to me um quickly on this film so he goes through a booby trap a gun booby trap which you know, Tangella does this around here. <laughs> and luckily I have not been shot yet, but uh, no, she plays with firearms and explosives. You, you'll see. No, she's, she's terrible. No, and she's caused trouble at your graveyard, I'm told. We'll, we'll talk about that too. Anyways, uh, he's, uh, he's uh, obviously some kind of zombie vampire guy, right? With, with some cool shades. With cool shades. Yeah, you know, I have cool shades too. I cannot wear them on the show because they tell me it hides my eyes, right? See, <laughs> you even have to look. All right, so uh, enough about this. Let's talk about you. How did you get into this whole graveyard thing? Um, well, in the mid '90s, my pops took me to a memorial um, Memorial Day to the rural cemetery, where they have the cemetery has this awesome program of adopting a plot, and I adopted uh, an Irish woman named Jenny Walker. Nice. And I've taken care of that grave here, here and there. I've moved away and come back and always taken care of her grave. Um, I'm also of Irish descent, so, you know, from that connection. So, quickly, what does one do to take care of a grave? You bring some tools, a little reiki, reiki, little, you can uh, so put it's, real it's flowers. So it's like landscaping, you make neat, you pull yeah, the weeds and you... Yeah, remove the up. beer bottles or whatever might be left oh, yeah right right yeah. right that's nice no it's it's like these signs we see adopt a highway yeah you Except can totally adopt a plot no you adopt a, a a grave you adopt you basically adopt a person right mm -hmm. and she was irish and you're irish mm -hmm. i wish i was irish no but so go on then one day i was at a creek cleanup here locally and i met this awesome gentleman named bill montgomery and he just so happened that later that day to be having a docent training. For that. For the rural cemetery. So Sign Sarah, me up. Yeah. Right. And it was just right time, right place, and just an avenue of exploration and learning that 
is never going to stop. How fun. How fun. So that was how long ago that that occurred? Probably about four years ago now. So you're a four year and you've been doing this since. Yes. Right. But um, Bill Montgomery and Nazi, Na Nancy Godfrey um, have been doing it since 1994. So they, they know a thing or two. Oh, yeah. Yes, yes. But you'll, you'll, you'll get there. <laughs> she's, she's probably quick to learn, like me. Hopefully not like me. All right, so um, you also told me you did this, this guarding thing where you go on Halloween and you guard the graveyard. Tell me about this. Well, Halloween security, you right. know, there are still a lot of people that think destroying and vandalizing cemeteries is like a fun and like cool to do to like right. impress their friends or something. Right. And we want to make sure that if people are passing through the cemetery, they're mindful and just passing through and not destroying. So you're not hiding behind tombstones looking for trouble. You... <laughs> You make sure they see you and say, oh. how are you tonight? Here's my flashlight. I'm watching you. Although I did go there one year with a Polaroid as security with a Polaroid camera just right. to kind of mess with people because sometimes right. they can, you know, they're having a, a good time on Halloween and right. they're not expecting me and my teammate to be there. How fun. So I would snap their photo and then they'd be like, what is going on? I'm like, give them the photo. Happy Halloween. Be oh, safe. How fun. No, no, no. That's, that's a nice gift. Hopefully they <laughs> don't get violent with you before you present the gift. But, uh, <laughs> no, that would be nice. And uh, another story you told me, you saw a ghost. Yes. Um, we were having a lamplight rehearsal, which is where we perform vignettes of people who are buried in the cemetery instances in their life, reenact it. And it was our very first dress rehearsal. And there were some lawyers in my vignette, so this, he had a nice top hat and a little overcoat. Yeah, my lawyer does not wear a top hat, so <laughs> oh, if, maybe if yours do, I, I think I'm going to change lawyers. And, you know, it's, uh, it's about dusk. The uh, sun's starting to set. I'm on top of the hill. I hear the lovely crickets and him kind of taking a panorama. And I just get this feeling of, ooh, it's time for you to go. And I'm like, no, but i got to finish recording these crickets in the sunset. And so I'm walking down, I, I finish up, I'm walking down the hill and probably about 40 feet in front of me on a downward slope, I see um, from the waist up a faded top hat and arms and like the upper torso of somebody. And I no see him, I didn't, it was kind of getting a little bit dark but you didn't. You saw everything else, and you didn't see the legs. So well, it's I was, like, it had to have been a ghost. It, it was a trip. So was it transparent, or was it uh, maybe dusty? Dusty. Dusty just looked oh, like. I never uh, heard that description, but that's a good description, mm -hmm. right? Like it's not solid. Yep. Wow. Dusty yeah. coat, dusty hat, and yeah. just. No, you know the the ghosts we have in this manner are not dusty. They're, they're more slimy. No, more like a jellyfish. It's just <laughs> transparent blue mm -hmm. is what we see. Yeah. Yeah. What do you say we get back to this film? Let's do it. All right, off we go back to The Vampire's Ghost. We shall be back with Miss Shannon on the other side of the break. See you soon. Taba, dead. Simon Peter shot. Can't talk. Hurt bad. Take him back to the plantation. Safari is over. Tomorrow I'm starting back to Bukunda.
been expecting you every day. Glad to see you back, Roy. Sorry I couldn't see it through with you, but these attacks of malaria. I'd have been more of a hindrance than a help. Anyway, you did a pretty good job without me. Oh, a fine job, Roy. The killings have stopped and all the natives are quiet. Well, we haven't heard the drums for some time now. Uh, Julie, Fallon's... Fallon's... What are you trying to say, Roy? I, I, I don't know. I, I can't seem to... It's the fever. You'll rest now. Fever and a bad one. I've never seen such violent delirium. He's going to need care. Well, he'll stay here, of course. Oh, yes. I'll take care of him. You won't be able to do it alone, Julia. I'd like to help, if I may. That's very kind of you. Not at all, Julia. I'd do anything to help you. Come in. Hello, Julia. Am I late? Not at all. I just stopped to get some food for Roy. How is he? I can't understand it. Normally, the fever goes after a few days, but this has been going on for two weeks now, and there's no change. Oh, he's come out of it once or twice, long enough to ask me to wire to Johannesburg for this book. I can't imagine what he wants with it. But he was so violent about it, the doctor said it might make him worse if he didn't get it. It's a horrible legend. Listen. Death, often the most dreaded of human experiences, is denied the vampire. He must prowl the earth endlessly. The real menace of the vampire comes from the fact that in many ways he appears normally human. He can become one of you. And all the while, his curse is upon you. The curse of the undead. Gives me the creeps. It's only a book, Julie. Let's go and see how the patient is, shall we? He's still asleep. You've been very kind to spend so much of your time here. You've been very kind to let me. You're tired, Julie. I'll stay with Roy. Thanks. Oh, Julie. I almost forgot. I have something for you. Oh, it's beautiful. But... Oh, please. Being here in this house has given me a new interest. Showed me a side of life I am not accustomed to. I'm grateful. Go and rest, Julia. You're one of the nicest people I've ever known. Fallon. I'm glad you're awake. Your book came, Roy. I can save you the trouble. The chapter you want begins on page 97. The cross has great power over the undead. They cannot bear its paralyzing touch. But the undead can be completely destroyed in only one way. The body must be consumed with fire and the ashes scattered. Did you really think that you could destroy me? I heard you just now with Julie. That's why you've been coming here, to be with her. Maybe it is, Roy. You destroy happiness. People like Julie and me, you come between them and destroy them. You told me that yourself at night out in the jungle. Let us alone, Fallon. I like it here. I like Julie. One day soon, she'll join me in eternal life. You can't, Fallon. I'm telling Father Gilchrist. I'm telling you. Uh... 
You are not telling anybody. There's nothing you could do to stop me. Nothing. My name is Elizabeth, and I'm calling from Tijuana, Baja, California. It's right across from San Diego. It's funny that you, Vincent, look like Ozzy Osbourne. Love all of you guys. Thank you. You have an excellent show. Hello, this is Livingston. Apparently, one of my newly acquired domestic duties is to request help for our show financially by asking you to visit our patron page. Your generosity will help keep Creature Features on the air, which I'm not entirely sure is a good thing. However, with only a few dollars a month from you, your kindness will allow us to continue creating new programming each week, which apparently some of you curiously enjoy. And should you have the desire to give even more, you might even receive a gift from Ms. Tangella. I think not. Please visit the website below to learn more. Thank you. Welcome back to the show, Miss Shannon Toomey. This vampire, he's, he's not a very good vampire, is he? He's too nice. He's not hungry. Is that it? He's not? Well, maybe he should have some Kool-Aid like you did, <laughs> right? No, no, no. He's, this, is not, this is what I don't like about this vampire film. He's not scary in the least bit. Does cool. he scare you? Uh, he scares me with his cool, calm, and collectiveness. Well, I should be scaring you with my cool, calm, <laughs> calm collectiveness, but I, I don't have any. What, what, is, what in God's name are these? These are little coffin boxes. They Crafty. are little coffin boxes. I love them. This one is so decorative, and it's got this, a doll. It's nice. It's an Eskimo. Is it an Eskimo? Mm -hmm. An Eskimo? She's barefoot. She's she got, barefoot. She's got cold feet. She would have cold feet if she was in the <laughs> snow, right? So... Shannon, you, you build these, you create these, these are your creations, and you've said you're going to donate these to our viewers, our patrons. Heck yeah. So if you, some of you patrons out there may receive one of these. What's in this one? This is another, oh, this one has sprinkles on it, no, sparkles, <laughs> what do they call it? Glitter. Glitter. There's it all over my hands now. Oh, <laughs> no, you use good glitter. This is wonderful. Right. Another Eskimo, this one does have shoes, right? <laughs> no, I, this, is, this is a thing. Yeah, she works in the graveyard where there's Eskimos, obviously. All right, and then there's this one, a green one. What's this, a scuba diver? Oh, I love it. No, what? That oxygen tank ain't gonna help her. Wouldn't they be buried <laughs> at sea, though? Is this one, it's green to go, to go to sea. And then last, but not least, this is like bigger? Yeah. This is like a jumbo one. <laughs> We've got like some kind of princess. Now, what is that? I would say uh, a corpse bride. A corpse bride. Let's go with it. And it's, it's a sparkly one as well, but you put all this, this, this plumage on the side. That one now, was fun. Do you have like an Etsy, Etsy page? You should have like an Etsy page. I should. I could. But you won't, so you shan't. <laughs> no, I don't blame you. It's, it's all that work. I mean, you know, you, you probably build these for fun, right? You, you know, when, when you feel that creative ball hit right. instead of having to do it on demand. You know? I, I channel mine in music, not in coffins. So. Heck yeah. No. I think I should be doing coffins. But no, <laughs> I bet you I'd be better at making coffins. Not as good as you, by the way. But I, I'd, be, I'd be better at making coffins than, than making music. You can yeah. do anything you think. You can do anything you want to do. Just put your mind to it. I don't want to go back to this film. <laughs> no. I, I'm getting somewhat slightly bored with this film. 
All right. Well, uh, what do you think? Should we just try to finish it up and yeah, yeah, roll it, let it go? <laughs> All right. Let's get back to the Vampire's Ghost, 1945. And then uh, when we come back, we're going to hear about some of these events that you conduct coming up. Right? <laughs> promise? Pinky promise. Pinky promise. All right. See you soon. You were at the Vance house. That's right. You were there last night and the night before and every day. You practically live there. Keeping track of me, Lisa? It's that Vance girl, Julie. She's the main attraction, isn't she? The only attraction. Good night, Lisa. Matter. Did you give you the brush off? Let me alone. You don't have much luck with Fallon, do you? Neither do I. How about teaming up? What do you mean? I'm well healed again. I'm looking for a chance to even up the score. You can't win. Are you sure? Cut the cards with him. One draw. High man. When he calls for a deck of cards, you bring this deck. Why do you think you can win with that deck? This is why. One draw. One draw. Eight high. Shuffle the cards, Lisa. You first. Peter King. I'll draw for Mr. Barrett. I might bring him luck. Ace of Diamonds. I think that tops you. <laughs> I think so, too. The drinks are on me, sister. Come on, boys. Luck runs in streaks, felon. Yours just started downhill. Babe? We may regret it. <laughs> Leave the regrets to Fallon. How about helping me spend some of this?
Lisa. Those drums. You know what they say? Barrett. This time it's Barrett. You followed him tonight. When he left. After the game. Why did you come here? Why? Don't be afraid, Lisa. Look at me. I'm speaking to you, Lisa. You can think of nothing else. Come to me, Lisa. Now. No. No. Lisa. Lisa. Angela, I'm getting real tired of having to put your toys back in the ground. I'm sorry I can't help you, gentlemen. Barrett was here last night, and so was Lisa. As far as I know, they left together. But I have no idea what happened to them after that. Mr. Fallon, we understand that Barrett did some gambling here last night. That, as a matter of fact, you yourself lost a considerable sum of money to him. You're trying to attach a motive to me, gentlemen? Oh, nonsense, nice, Fallon. We know you better than that. Furthermore, we mustn't forget that Barrett's winnings were found in his pocket, untouched. The killer could have been frightened away. No, I doubt it. And even if robbery were the motive in Barrett's case, how do you account for the murder of the dancer? You've known this girl for some time, Mr. Fallon? Yes, she worked for me here ever since I opened. I was very fond of Lisa. I don't know where I'm going to find another dancer half as good. Well, uh, what puzzles us most, Mr. Fallon, is the strange circumstances of death. In both cases, the bodies had peculiar punctures at the throat. In both cases, the bodies were partly drained of blood. We don't know how to explain it. Neither do I. All I can say is that these two new deaths are very similar to those that have been throwing the natives into a panic. Well, unfortunately, that's all any of us can say. Strums. Unless we settle this thing soon, we're in for a bad time. Wakanda has turned into a ghost town. Not a native left at the docks. Not a native left at the rubber plantation. Even the women and children are gone. Gentlemen, you can see for yourselves what this trouble's done to my business. Then you can't suggest anything will help us out. Nothing. I'm sorry. Expect you at the house this evening. Yes, I'm looking forward to it. Good day, gentlemen. Good day. Good day. It's in my eyes. Draw the curtains. You heard me, Roy. Draw the curtains. I see you've been reading your book again. You've learned the undead are chained to their graves. I'd give anything to chain you to yours. Were you going to throw that earth out of the window? If you did, do you know what I'd have to do? I'd have to go back for more before the next full moon. That's all. Well, there's the window. Go ahead, scatter it. Let Julie alone. Let us both alone. Go away, anywhere, away from Bakunda. Where to? This has all happened before. It'll all happen again. No matter where I go. Until the end of time. You look human. Isn't there any human soul left in you? Do you have to kill and destroy? 
On the contrary, I bring life to my victims. Didn't you read that in your book? Lisa will rise from her grave and walk again, just as I did. So will Barrett. So will Julie. You bother with a dagger when even a bullet couldn't hurt me. You've forgotten your book, Roy. Go back to Julie while you still have a chance. She won't be with you much longer. are gathering at their villages. They've decided to take matters in their own hands. They blame Fallon. Blame Fallon? Yes, I'm afraid this settles it. Fallon will have to leave Bacondo at once. Leave? But you can't do that to him. It's for his own protection, Julie. Giving up everything, that's protection. Oh, please, try to understand. I think I do understand. You're afraid. Somebody has to be blamed, and Fallon's the outsider. Julie, that's not the point. No, I can see that. Fallon's tried to help in every possible way, yet you're willing to take away everything he has and drive him out of here, because these silly things have happened and... Do you want to see him killed? I want to see you find out the truth. Dad, don't you realize that driving Fallon out of here isn't going to stop this thing? It'll just start all over again, and then you'll have hurt him and all for nothing. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm afraid we'll have to risk that. And you, Roy, are you going to risk it, too? Well, why don't you speak up? Fallon saved your life not once, but twice. He made that trek through the jungles with you, and he's been taking care of you through your sickness, and... Well, why don't you say something? Why don't you defend your friend? Julie, please. Roy's not well. You shouldn't. Well, what's the matter with him? What's the matter with all of us? Julie's upset. Nerves on edge. We're all that way. Don't let it worry you, Roy. I'm glad you're here, Father. There's more trouble. Yes, I know. I heard it on the drums. That's the reason I came back. I'm on my way to see Webb Fallon. I won't be long. In the meantime, I wish you'd have a talk with Julie. I will, Tom. Roy, first I'd like to have a little talk with you. You're the real reason I came back. The drum said you were very ill. Is it the fever? Roy, look at me. The drums say it isn't the fever. It is something else. Something deeper. Something that I can help you with. Tell me about it. I... I can't, Father. Roy, you've got to believe that a man's free will cannot be controlled by another unless he cooperates. And that's exactly what you've done. You've let Fallon control your will. It's up to you to stop it. What's the use, Father? It's too late. It's never too late if you really want help. The place for that help is the house of God. Shall we go there together, Roy? This is Livingston, and you're watching Creature Features. Stay tuned.
You know, uh, Shannon, he's not really much of a vampire now, is he? He's eaten. People. No, vampires should, like, dissolve in the sun, right? Or sparkle. Or sparkle. No, <laughs> I, don't, I don't subscribe to that whole thing, sparkle. <laughs> Who came up with uh, these sparkle, not, not <laughs> vampires? So uh, the people are beginning to figure out he's actually a vampire. Yeah, you know, I had it figured out quite a bit earlier than these people did, and I think you did as well. Yeah. Yeah, these older films, you know, think that we as the audience are not as smart as they are, but we are, are we not? We've definitely had our brains. Um Go through some changes. We're smarter than we yes, used to be. Yes, no, my brain went through some changes <laughs> during my rock and roll days, as did my eardrums. All right, enough about this film. Let's talk about you. So your tours, what kind of tours do you do? We do history tours um, about the cemetery and right. some prominent people. Right. Um, like, there's like a lot of uh, big wigs that streets were named after, right. buried in the cemetery. Um, we have women's Is Mr. Main one of the people? Say it again. Mr. Main, like Main Street? No. 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 <laughs> no I've, well, well, he seems to have a, a, a street in every town in America. <laughs> I don't know. It's strange. All right. So there's a historical one, and then there was other ones you said, other types of tools. Yeah, where we'll um, shine the light on um, like a w the prominent women in right. the community that, right. have, that are buried. Um, tapestry of cultures, which, um, you know, we are many people that make our community from right. Germany, from Scotland, from Mexico. Um, so that one really puts um, a, sh a light on right. um, all the people who helped build our community right. back right. in the 1800s. Way back when. So let's say I was gonna go on the, the famous women tour. Yeah. What, tell, walk me through, what would that entail? What would I see? Well, you're gonna get, be transported in time because we like to wear- You have a time machine. No, yeah. but uh, we'll, well, we'll, we paint the Im we, you will, th you will think you are. I will feel. No, it would be like a mental trip, right? Yeah. Yes, all right. All right, we, so we like to back dress in time. Up. We like to dress up in period clothing. Would I have to dress up as a historical woman as well? We wouldn't mind, yeah. No, but you would not require this. No, but um, you're more than welcome to come in costume. No, I have nothing that would fit, so. But uh, go on. I'm sorry, I interrupted. Um, we're going to take you by a grave of Annabelle Stewart and her sisters who were, um, I think, lawyer. Uh, the three sisters were, there was a doctor, a lawyer, and a prominent teacher. And in what period did they live? The 1800s. 1800s? Um, there wait, was women wait, the lawyers 1800s 18... is actually the 1700s, isn't it? So the early 1900s? No, the 18th century is 1700s. But the 1800s is are the, the 1800s. 1800s. <laughs> right. Now, so there was lady lawyers. Yes. In the 1800s. Mm hmm My goodness. There were, and also a doctor. Um, and then there was also this other male doctor who, his name was um, Boyce. He was a better uh, doctor when he was uh, drinking the spirits. Oh. That's how, that was he, what he was known for was no. practicing. I hope he was not a surgeon. <laughs> the better Dr. Boys. Give him a drink before he cuts you <laughs> up in. That's terrible. Who yeah. else? Oh, my, my brain's a little dusty. No, that's um, all right. It's because you're a Madame ghost. Madame Excelsior. Madame Excelsior. You know, we're going to dig up a photo of her because I'm fascinated with Madame. I, I, we don't even have anyone in Great Britain named Madame Excelsior. That's just such a Victorian, wonderful name. Mm -hmm. you know, maybe she visited the UK during her heyday at the top of her. What did she do? What didn't she do? She did not live to today, <laughs> for one, <laughs> or else I'd be interviewing her as well as you. No, but was, she was a performer, you said. Mm -hmm. right. In like a traveling show. Right, but she would like sing, or would she do like? Um, she would do acrobats. I think she Acrobat? even um, was good with a rifle. Oh, she was like uh, uh, Annie Get Your Gun. Something Annie like Oakley? That. No, who, who was that? Who, who had the gun? The woman. Who? Annie Oakley. Annie Oakley. No, she was like an Annie Oakley type, except she was named Madame Excelsior, so she had much more style and class, right? Mm -hmm. Maybe. We don't know. She's dead. 
we just look it up in the book, right? Mm -hmm. Good. Well, that sounds like fun. So um, you've got events not happening anymore this year, but you've got them coming up next year, right? Yeah, the cemetery is pretty uh, dead this time of year. Did you see what she did? That was good. No, that's great. Is it dead on Halloween? No, it's very lively. Very um, lively. Um, right, no one would hope. It should be. Do, 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 do you decorate a cemetery, or is it just something that's already decorated for Halloween? It's all right. It's Come ready to go. Come as it is. Right. No, there's even spiders and spider webs, right? Oh, there are some nice there spider webs be. in there, too. Right. No, one would think. All right, what do you say we wrap up this film? Let's wrap it up. Let's do it. Off we go to The Vampire's Ghost, the last bit of it. We will see you on the other side of the credits. Don't you dare go away while the credits are rolling. Those are the movie's credits, not ours. Our credits come later. Bye. Well, Tom, glad to see you. Good evening, Palin. Voodoo magic. That's what I came to see you about. Come in, let's shut out that wind. Ah, it's not a focus focus. I don't let it bother me. Well, it's getting rather serious. Do you know what those drums are saying? Sure, I can read the drums. According to them, I'm the cause of all the trouble here. Don't tell me you believe that, Tom. Oh, of course not. But these rumors have a way of spreading, of getting out of control. It's gotten to a point, Fallon, where... Well, I'm concerned for your personal safety. Oh, well, thanks, Tom. A glass of sherry? No, thank you. Do you think these rumors are as serious as all that? Enough that I'd like to see you leave Bikunda for a while, until this thing blows over. Want to leave my business? What there is of it? I think it's the wise thing to do. Oh, just for a month or so. Of course, it won't solve our problem, but at least it will clear you in the eyes of the natives. I wish you'd consider it, Fallon. It is considered, Tom, and decided. I'll leave Bakunda as quickly as possible. Well, thank you. I don't think either one of us will regret it. Now, there's a boat scheduled to sail in the morning, the Bakunda Queen. Not the Bakunda Queen, Tom. No skipper since the death of Barrett. Don't worry, I'll find some way of leaving the country. Good night, Fallon. Good night. Good luck. Peter, you're well again. But not in the heart, Mr. Roy. Those drums, what they say about Mr. Fallon is true. You must believe it. I do believe it. I've believed it ever since that night out in the jungle on the safari. And yet you do nothing, Mr. Roy? I couldn't. It was like being sick with fever. Even my tongue was tied. The curse of the undead. Roy. You shouldn't be on your feet like this. Sit down. I'm all right. I'm well again. Father Kilchrist helped me free myself of Fallon. Free yourself? I don't understand. I've been under his control ever since that night out on the safari. I hadn't been able to tell anyone until tonight. I think we'd better be on our way, Roy. 
Stay here with Julie. Don't let her out of your sight. Not for a second. Stay with Julie? Where is she? Isn't she here? Not in her room. I thought she was with you. Fallon. She's gone to Fallon. Box of Earth. It would be right there if he intended to come back. But well, that's... That's Julie's. She's gone, Tom. With Fallon. What about the Bacunda Queen? It's scheduled to sail at dawn. Not until next week. There's no skipper to replace Barrett. There's no other ship in port. Well, if they went by motor, they're either bound for Angana or Calabar. I'll get Dylan to open the telegraph office. Not a chance in a million they went anywhere but straight into the back country. We can't telegraph into the jungle. Oh, wait a second. We can. Simon Peter, the drums. No, 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 wait. If we let the natives know Fallon's out there in the jungle, there'll be an open fight. I'm thinking of Julie. Tell the tribes this is our Juju. We don't want them to interfere. We'll get Fallon ourselves. All we want is their help to locate him. Send it like that. Samba's village. They have seen nothing of Fallon or the lady. Ask them to relay our message and have each tribe that receives it relay it again. Fallon and the lady have been seen on the trail near the Malunga village trekking north. Repeat the message that no one is to interfere. Keep all the drums working. We want to report on the drums of their position each time they're seen. Roy, there's no chance to get carriers now. We'll have to go alone with light packs and rifles. Rifles are useless, Tom. I mean against Fallon. Well, something's got to stop him. I'm going with you. Not on a trek like this. I know these jungles, Roy, and I might be needed. This is Etoba village, Julie. We can stop here. What was this place? A temple village sacred to the death guard of a forbidden cult. The cult was destroyed, but the temple was never touched. Native taboo says that those who come here will die. What a terrible thing. To 
to worship death. There need be no death, Julie, if you know the way. I can show you the way. Where can we rest? Up here. here until moonrise. They were seen entering the Itoba village. How far is that? About two hours, pushing hard. The moon should rise in a little less than two hours. You mean we can't make it? We've got to make it. The path of time is curved upon itself like a circle, without beginning, without end. A man may follow that path forever if he chooses. But he need not walk alone. We could walk that path together, Julie. We could visit worlds that no human eye has ever seen. Will you come with me, Julie? I'll go with you. Always. Sleep, Julie. Sleep. When the moon is risen, you will be beyond death. It's almost moonrise. Well, let's keep going. Julie, this box contains the earth from my grave. It's not a sign of death, Julie. It's a sign of power in another world. Julie, I'll no longer be alone. You'll be with me. You will walk with me through the dark shadows of eternity. Julie. 
like a terrible dream. But it's all over. And so ends the vampire's ghost. Did you notice, Shannon, that uh, when this uh, this thing, this 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 statue thing fell down, it uh, had metal pipes inside of it? I didn't catch that. No, no. it was it was a Hollywood rewind, and you'll <laughs> see it. It's uh, it's funny. You could see like how they built it. Now keep your hands up. Those are not for you. Those are for our patrons. We are sending these out to four lucky patrons, or maybe three if I keep breaking them. And uh, sorry, they're not they're not for you. Oh, look at this. She saved something for you. Look at that. No. That looks like <laughs> something she would make. Oh, that's wonderful. Did she sign it? That makes sure you see, you know, because it's, it's 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 more valuable if she signs it. I'm not going to take that from you. I've got four of these. In any case, uh, okay movie. We will show it again in two point. Seven years now. I think that's all average. Two point seven years. Hey, did you like this film? It, was, it was. It wasn't too bad. It wasn't too bad. No. You would have preferred it if we showed Star Wars, though. I bet, right? Ah, uh, maybe Spaceballs. Spaceballs. <laughs> I like that film. I don't know if we can get it. So, if you were to choose any horror film, what would it be? Well, the the, uh, the characters that come into my dreams would probably be uh, Rob Zombie's House of a Thousand Corpses. House of a Thousand Corpses. Yeah, she likes that film as well. <laughs> I, yeah, I, I would be fine with a house with a hundred corpses. But a, a thousand? <laughs> I mean, what are you going to do with a thousand corpses? She, she cannot even utilize a thousand corpses. You could. <laughs> yeah, she makes candles. And I don't want to ask where the materials come from. Candles. I don't know where the wick comes from. She's terrible. Anyway, so, so what do you got going on next? Fun stuff? Any vacations? Getting ready for the holidays? Things like that? No, I just uh, continue learning about the cemetery and gathering new blood to be in the cemetery with us and learn about it together. Oh, that's nice, nice. And then just make sure that you don't get it on your lip sometimes. No, I think she bit somebody when she did that. It's possible. Who knows? She's got sharp teeth. Yeah, she's got sharp teeth <laughs> as well. I'm told. I don't know. Yeah, she doesn't eat meat. Why, why would she have sharp teeth if she does not eat meat? That's like, a, no, it's an ecological, biological thing. I don't know. She's silly. I like your hat, though. All right, well, that's about it. Uh, Shannon, thank you so much for coming on the show. You were absolutely wonderful. Thank you for the gifts for our patrons. They will be sent out with love. And that uh, next time you're in town, come do visit. I most certainly will. All thank right. you for having me. You're very welcome. And as far as you guys go, thank you for watching our silly little program. Uh, we know you could have been doing something else, like uh, getting ready for Thanksgiving, I think is what they'd be doing now. But instead, you stayed up late to watch our show. And for that reason, we love you. We'll see you next week. So, uh, Shannon, I'm thinking, when my time finally comes to go, might there be some room in the rural cemetery for me? No room for you in there. Oddfellows? Definitely.